Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. Today's video is an introduction into photo pills. I'm only going to cover three parts of this app and that is spot stars which gives you the correct exposure when we're photographing Milky Way with your camera and lens. Night AR will help you find where the Milky Way is in the sky at any given time in the year. And the last one I'll probably talk about the planner. I use planners sometimes if I want to go to some place I don't want to travel there beforehand. For example I went to the Lake Weaver tree about a month ago. I'd never been there before but I want to have an idea of where the Milky Way was going to rise around that tree. So I used the planner to give me an idea of where the Milky Way was going to rise in relation to the tree because this place is very defined that there's only a certain time of the year that you can shoot the Milky Way from there. So I didn't want to drive up there and realize that I was at the wrong time of the year. So photo pills you can get for Android and Apple iOS devices. It costs around 10 to $15 depending on your device. Let's jump right into photo pills and there's our screen. And the top, top of the screen here, now depending on the device you have and the way it's orientated, it could show up slightly differently. So the first one we want to talk about is Spot Stars because this is the one that is most important when you're starting out in astrophotography because you want to know how long your exposure can be for the lens that you're using and the camera that you're using because the camera that you use is going to play a big part in your exposure time. I have, as many of you know, the Nikon D500, which is a 20 megapixel crop sensor camera. A mate of mine has the full frame Nikon D850. We could shoot at basically the equivalent focal length of 16 mils. He could be on around 15 mils. I will be on 11 mils, which equates to around 16 mils on a full frame camera. But our shutter speed will be very different because his has got a much bigger megapixel camera than what I have. Let's go to Spot Stars now. You can see it shows it's a Nikon D500. My focal length is 11 mils. My aperture is set to f2.8. Now you can see here it has NPF rule 19.3 seconds. 500 rule 30 seconds. Years ago before these apps really came out this is what we used to use. Say so, okay well I'm on 11 mils I know I can push it to around 30 seconds so I would normally use around 25 seconds when I was shooting at 11 mils on my old APS-C crop sensor cameras like the D7000, the D7100. The real setting should have been 19.3 seconds. I can't dial in 19 seconds. I can only choose 15 or 20 seconds. Most of the time I would dial in 20 seconds. Watch what happens when I select the D850. D850. He uses a Tamron 15 to 30 mils, normally at 15 mils. So I come up and I select the focal length 15 mils, click OK. He's shooting at f2.8 just like I was. But now look, the NPF rule 14.5 seconds, five seconds less than what I was shooting. And his 500 rule was 33 seconds. He can't shoot 33 seconds, he stopped at 30 seconds unless we use timer remotes. But at 30 seconds he would see star trails because that's an extra 15 minutes. So that's doubling the exposure time. Now let's go back to my D500. We're back at 11 mils and it's showing me 19.3 seconds like it was before. But watch what happens if I increase my focal length from 11 mils and I zoom in to 20 mils because this lens can go from 11 to 20. So I come to 20 mils, I've gone from 20 seconds to 10.7 seconds, let's say 11 seconds. I've lost about 9 seconds of exposure time. Why is that? I've zoomed in so the stars are theoretically going to be moving faster through the frame. The further you zoom out the less you're going to see star trails. The more you zoom in the quicker you are going to get star trails through your image. So this is something that you have to be mindful about. You can't just think that you can leave your shutter speed the same if you have a zoom lens like mine 11 to 20 mils. Now let's move on to the next one which is Night AR. So I've just left my office come outside to show you how Night AR works. This is Night AR in application. You can see the Milky Way nice and bright in the sky. The line in the, just underneath the center here that is our horizon. Everything that's above the line is visual. We can see the Milky Way there we can see the stars are moving. 
Now the blue line that you see from top left to bottom right, that is where the Sun Celestial Pole and the Northern Celestial Pole meet. If I was doing star trails out that way, I would get two sets of stars rotating around that point. What else do we see? We see the Milky Way and the red dot that looks like the Sun is not the Sun or the Moon. That is the core of the Milky Way. Very important because this shows you where the core of the Milky Way is because as an astrophotographer, you want to get the core of the Milky Way in your shot because that is where the most detail of the Milky Way is. Now down the bottom here, we have visual calibration and we also have right in the center here, 14 mil. My phone is a Samsung S10. I have two cameras that I can use with this app. One is 14 mil and if I click on it here, you see camera zero, camera one. I click on camera zero here. Now it's showing me 26 millimeters. I can hardly see the night sky. So I'll go back to use camera one. If you have a much newer phone, apparently some of the newer ones, you can use three cameras. So if you click on that and you see camera zero, camera one, camera two, just choose whichever camera is best for you. If you don't see that, that means that your phone can only use one camera. So it defaults to that camera. Where will the Milky Way be when it gets dark? Around 20 past six at this time of the year. So let's rotate around. So I just grab the camera here and move it around. And I want around 20 past six. There, 18 past six. And look how high the Milky Way is already. It's climbed quite high. I might say, this is great. I like that. But you might also say, well, for my shot that I want, I want the Milky Way much lower to the horizon. We will have to wait much later at night. Now remember, the Milky Way moves just like the Sun and the Moon, so it tracks and it will be rotating around. Where will it be? Let's say at 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. Let's move the phone now to face south because that's where it's going to be at around 11 o'clock at night. So now let's keep rotating the time. We're 20 past 6 and we'll take it around to just over 11, quarter past 11. And look, the Milky Way now is anchored to south. At seven o'clock, it was way off in the east now. And you can say, yeah, that looks pretty good, but it's still a bit high. I want it lower. What time would I have to come back out to this location to photograph it? So I keep rotating around. Nearly one o'clock in the morning, go like, this is beautiful. And I'll just rotate it around and look. Can you see how low it is on the sky? It's very low across the western horizon. And you might say, this is great. One o'clock in the morning, this old farmhouse will look great with the Milky Way just arcing over the top of the farmhouse. And also, this would be a great time to do a panorama of the Milky Way. The Milky Way is low in the sky. You can do a very nice set of images and capture the whole of the Milky Way. It's great taking just one photo of the Milky Way. But when you get the whole of the Milky Way in your image, it just looks magnificent. Where would it be in a month's time? And this is where night AR comes in. So we click on settings up here. We click on the date. Now we unclick current date. We go down to the date and we want September. And let's click September the 4th. And the time we'll select 7.30. We click OK. So we click OK. We get out of settings. Now look, the Milky Way is much lower in the sky. And it's actually moved a bit. If I rotate it around here, 11 o'clock at night, it is about the same location that it was now at one o'clock in the morning. So by one o'clock in the morning, the Milky Way would have set. And it is in September that I like photographing the Milky Way at Lake Mugra, about two hours drive from here, because the Milky Way sets on the western horizon. This is also the time that I like doing time lapses because I get the Milky Way setting over the lake. And because the Milky Way is low on the horizon, I get so much of it in my camera. The last thing I want to show you here is if I bring it back here, see we've got a big circle here. This is the Sun Celestial Pole. This is such a beautiful thing to photograph if you're wanting to do star trails. Because if I put my camera here and took a series of images, I would get just the stars going round and round and round. So for example, let's say you found a tree, a big tree and you go like, wow, this big dead tree would look so nice with the Celestial Pole. Put night AR and you just walk around and go, okay, there's a tree right in front of me. This is where I have to be to photograph a set of star trail images. So this is the beauty of using night AR. You can use it in daytime or nighttime. Now let's move on to the planner. So we've covered spot stars, night AR, 
the last one I want to show you is the planner so we come up the top here we click on planner now remember the planner is to help you plan a trip so if you're going on holidays like we're going on holidays to Cairns in September for the school holidays we're going up to Cape Tribulation so I've been using the planner to see if I can take photographs of the Milky Way while I'm up there so this is set to Lake Weber because I was there last week I just want to see what it was like down the bottom here you can see it's like a graph form and I can slide it left or right now there's a lot of lines here the blue ones the light blue dark blue represents the moon the yellow and orange represents the sun all I'm going to do here is just keep going around until I get close to night time you can see the colors change now we can't see the Milky Way yet but we're already at 10 to 6 but on night AR it was showing us that the Milky Way was already in the sky but it's not visible so the planner is not going to show you the Milky Way until it's visible to the naked eye so we we'll just go a little bit more now it's just visible here and watch what happens if I keep scrolling now we're in dark and look can you see the angle of the Milky Way to give you an idea of what you're looking at you've got a very bright white line going towards the right and then you've got another one that's basically running top right to bottom left this is the Milky Way the whole arc of the Milky Way and it shows you the rotation of how the Milky Way rotates in the sky the bright white is the core of the Milky Way because most photographers like photographing the core and you can see here up the top here it shows the galactic center of the Milky Way is 102 degrees the elevation is already 63 degrees so it's quite high in the sky because remember 90 degrees is vertical 60 degrees you're already two-thirds up in the sky so it's showing you that it's quite high and up the top here look see it's showing visibility of the Milky Way the time from 6 40 p.m. until 3 58 a.m. and the elevation is from 60 degrees to set set means that it's right on the western horizon so you've got around 120 degrees of movement of the Milky Way if I keep going watch how the Milky Way moves across the sky can you see all of a sudden we're just about vertical right across the line it means it's just up and down if I keep going along now it's actually rotated to the western horizon and it just keeps going until it sets there and you notice all of a sudden that line just changed and all those little dots on the right now is the bottom half of the Milky Way galaxy because it's a galaxy so it's a circle now all this shows you that the Milky Way is not visible in our sky if I keep rotating you can see it's just gone now I'll keep going till the next day until it gets to twilight then all of a sudden up it pops there you go it's there again and off the cycle continues this is for this time of the year now the plan is good because we can set the time as well if I want to see what it would look like here in September now remember I said September the Milky Way faces west watch what happens if I click on the time here 11 37 p.m. now it's showing today's date well it's tomorrow because we've actually cycled one day so I want to go here I will go to September 17th like I did last time I'll come back to the time I'll come back to 737 I'll click OK I click OK now look where the Milky Way is at 7:30 p.m. if I go back to around 6 30 last week the Milky Way was to the east now look it's already leaning to the west by the time it gets into a nice position closer to the horizon it's nine o'clock and it's just about due west well west southwest this is where the planner really helps you because it helps you plan for Milky Way shoots at different times of the year you can start shooting the Milky Way from late March to early October let's say in Australia so when I go out I normally aim to photograph the Milky Way in places where I can get a good easterly view that's where the Milky Way is going to be towards the later part of the year end of August September then I start trying to find locations that the Milky Way is going to look good westwards so I will go out to Lake Mugra I will go out to the scenic rim at that time of the year because the Milky Way is going to be facing in the locations that I know it looks great so I hope 
this introductory to photo pills has given you an idea of how to use photo pills to set up your camera to plan when you're out there where the Milky Way is so where you can actually set up your camera and then using planner if you're going on holidays to see if you can photograph the Milky Way while you're on holidays thanks for watching if you liked the video give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time